In this video, I'll show you how to toggle an LED using a push button. For that, we'll be using ESP IDF framework in VS Code with ESP32 microcontroller. Hello everyone, welcome to IoT Frontier. My name is Hariharna. I have got many positive comments on my previous video that is getting started with ESP IDF using VS Code. Because of that video, I'm creating another tutorial on this video. If you haven't watched my previous video, then I would recommend you to watch it first from the top right corner or in the description before proceeding with this video. Now, let's get started with the video. I'll first explain the objective of this tutorial. So, the objective is to develop a program using ESP IDEA framework in VS Code per ESP32 to toggle an LED state each time a push button is pressed. Simply speaking, if an LED is in off position initially, we press the push button and the LED should turn on. And if we again press the push button, the LED should turn off. This is called toggling of LED. So for this, we need the following hardware and software components. The first one is VS Code and ESP IDF setup. This has been explained in my previous video that I have already mentioned earlier. So you can watch that video if you have not done that setup. Then ESP32 board, push button or tactile switch that we call. Then LED is needed and 220 ohm resistor to limit the current of an LED. And then we need jumper wires and breadboard to connect these things. Now let's look into the circuit diagram and connect the components as shown in the schematic. So here we'll be connecting GPIO4 with the tactile switch and GPIO2 with the LED. So LED another end is connected to the 220 ohms and the ground pin. So here we are taking one ground pin common and that is being connected to LED as well as push button. So this is a simple connection that we need to do. Now let's look into the VS code. So first I'll open VS code. Once the VS code is open, because you have done all the setup for ESP IDF, you can see this ESP IDF Explorer. So you can click on that ESP IDF Explorer and then you should be getting this ESP IDF welcome page. So you can click on new project. So it will open a new page and so it will first ask you to choose which ESP IDF. So you can select this and provide the name. So I'll use LED toggle and here you can select the project directory as it is and in the ESP ID of target you can choose the relevant ESP board. So I'm using ESP32 and the kit is this 3.3 volts and also I have this serial port which is already connected. The USB of ESP32 is connected and I can see COM3 port. And now I can choose the template and select ESP IDF and click on sample project. So from sample project, I can create a project. So it will create a project and it will say project has been created and you can click yes to open it in a new window. So I'll close the old one and open this one. So this project has been created with LED toggle and we can see a dev container, this VS code folder and main and C make list. So here you can see main.c is the important one and it is very blank. So here I'll provide my code. So here you can see the important directives has been added here first one is stdio for print and those things and free autos for some of the functions that we are going to use and task and gpio controls all these things are mentioned so later on you can see we are defining the gpio pins for led and the button for led we are using gpio number two this is a constant and this is also a constant called four that we are using and this is the app main so app main will be the first function that will be running when we 
compile this code and here you can see some configuration has been done so this is part of led configuration and this is part of button configuration i'll be explaining you in detail here so first is gpio config underscore t so this is the struct we can see here this is the struct which is using for providing the parameters per gpio config function so when if you want to configure this gpio uh, pins for example some gpio pins like uh, we have led will be output and button will be input and some other uh, comp configuration has to be provided that can be done using this struct so first we are initializing the struct and this struct has the different members for each configuration first is this is interrupt type if we are going to use this as an interrupt or which kind of interrupt but here we have mentioned this has to be disabled so ideally this number is an enum which is equal to zero which means we are disabling this next one is the mode so pin mode we already know that pin mode whether it is input or output this is also enum so you can check that is two we are giving you can use control and click on this to see all the enums types so you can see the first one is uh, disable input output and uh, input output like that these are the different enums that we can find next thing is we have pin bit mask so we are using one number called unsigned long long so with that we are using bit wise operator and here we are making sure that this led gpio pin 2 is being enabled by using this bit mask so by by using this uh, line we are making sure that all other values are zero and only this led gpio pin will be on so for that we are using bitwise operator and next thing is we are making sure to disable the pull down resistor we are not using it and pull up also enable is zero and this complete led io conf with and symbol which means that this complete value will be set to gpio config which means that we are applying this configuration same way we are doing for the button and the only difference here is that we are using this as an input mode and second thing here also we are using button gpio that is 4 gpio to enable that pin and here we are going to use internal pull up resistor so that whenever we don't press anything on the button the value will be high and when we press the button the value will be low so by this we don't have to use external uh, resistor so that is the use of this internal pull up resistor and then we are applying this configuration and next thing is we have to keep track of two variables so that we keep on changing that so first one is led state so initially we keep it as zero and then last button state is one so one because we are making sure it we are using pull up resistor so that's why we keep it as high next we are just printing for our debugging purpose and the next main loop which is while true and we are making sure this is the logic to read the current state of the button so to read the state of the button we use gpio get level this will be stored in current button state and then we are using this debouncing logic which is simple debouncing logic that we are first checking if the current button state is equal to 0 and last button state is equal to equal to 1 so last button state we can see here and the current button state is equal to 0 if this condition is meeting we'll say that button is pressed and we make sure the led is toggled with not symbol so use we use this not symbol so that whatever state is there it will be opposite and next we are setting that using gpio set level for led gpio and the led state is being set to that after that we are giving a short delay so that we don't have multiple toggles within few seconds so with 
200 milliseconds we are using this port tick period ms which means that 200 will be divided into this ticks because in uh, esp idf will be using ticks so each millisecond is converted into ticks which will be understandable by our board so that's why in if we are using v task delay 200 divided by port tick period ms which means that it will be having some value so you can see this value so this value makes sure that we are having 200 milliseconds delay and next we make sure that the last button status will be provided with the current button status it will make sure that we this condition will be meeting whenever we press the button and then a small delay of 10 milliseconds will be provided so that the whole code will not be continuously running and it will not be consuming too much of cpu so now what we have to do is we need to make sure to open this esp idf explorer and we need to do some of the setup so first is we need to make sure we set up the port so click on this port select the com3 and click on the flash method so i use uart and select the monitor port that is com3 and we set the device target esp32 these some of the things we have already done while we are creating the project but still i am doing it again and then uh, i'll be doing this build project so that this code will be converted into machine level language so it will take two to five minutes or less than that based on our cpu now we can see the build has been successful next thing is we need to flash so you can flash the code so it is very quick to flash and flash is done next is we need to monitor the device so click on that monitor so that we can see the logs so we we can see the led starting so now we need to click on the button so when i click on the button you can see led is getting toggled again i'll click you can see the led is toggled so like this we keep on doing and it keeps on updating and that's it for today's video if you found this video informative please smash that like button if you would like me to continue these videos on esp idf and vs code then please type more in the comment section below so that i can create a playlist for these videos your support means a lot to us and helps us keep creating more content like this so please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon thank you for watching and i'll see you in another interesting video